I'm Poppy Tooker. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a classic old New Orleans dish that was almost forgotten called Kala. It's a very easy preparation. The way we're going to make the Kala is we're going to take two cups of cooked rice. The cooked rice must be at least room temperature, if not cold, out of the refrigerator. And yes, that leftover chi Chinese restaurant rice is just perfect for this. So we take the two cups of rice, and we're going to add to it six tablespoons of flour, all-purpose flour. Three, four, five, six. They're heaping tablespoons. Next, we're going to add the leavening agent which is baking powder. Two teaspoons of baking powder and we're going to mix the dry ingredients up. All right. Now we're going to add the sugar and three heaping tablespoons of sugar go into the basic recipe. And mix it in. We're going to add about a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. And lastly, to bind the kala together, we're going to add two raw eggs. One, two. All right. So, as we mix, it forms a nice, tight batter. Easy, easy, and fast. So the two eggs bind it together to make a nice, tight batter. And there we go, just like that. Now we're all ready to fry the kala. So we take two spoons and we move the mixture from spoon to spoon and then push it off into the hot oil. That's how easy it is. Now, the kala are a very important dish in the history of New Orleans. If you've been to New Orleans, you've probably had the beignet and cafe au lait down at Cafe Du Monde across from famous Jackson Square. But the kala are a lot more interesting and have a lot more historical significance. Now at this point, I'd like to point out, point out to you that the kala are a very obedient food. Once you get them into the oil, you don't even have to pay them any mind because they brown on one side and then they turn themselves over and brown on the other. So we're going to see those kala flipping over in the hot oil as they cook. So in the very earliest days of New Orleans, the kala figured into our history. If we were to go to Ghana or Liberia today, to the open air markets, we would find the women making kala. And if we asked them, what is that? In their native tongue, the Bantu tongue, they would say kala. So this is actually a dish that made the trip across the Atlantic Ocean in the minds and hearts of the enslaved rice growing peoples of Africa who were brought here to North America to teach us how to cultivate rice. Once it got to New Orleans, it figured quickly into the history. Now, before the Louisiana Purchase, the city was ruled by the Code Noir. The Code Noir laid out all of the regulations for how the white people, the slaves, and the free people of color were to live in the city together. The free people of color had basically all the same rights as the white people did. They were professionals. They were educated, doctors and lawyers, they owned property, they even owned slaves. Now, in the Code Noir, it said that all slaves were required by law to have at least one day a week off. So the slave's day off was often Sunday. And they would go into the streets, and many of them became street vendors. A lot of them were kala vendors. Now, here we have some of our kala ready to come out of the pan. Look how beautiful that is. So we'll go ahead and as they're nice and toasty brown on both sides, we'll start to pull them out. 
The Calais vendors would go through the streets of the old French Quarter, and they even had a special street call. They would call out, Calais, Calais, Belle Calais to show, Madame, Belle Calais to show, which means beautiful Calais, very hot. So you'd hear that call, and you knew the Calais vendor was out there. She was always waiting outside of St. Louis Cathedral because when morning mass ended, those fasting Catholics were just dying for something to eat. So, the in the Code Noir, the slave's day off was one thing that in essence dealt with the Kala. And the other was that if a slave came to you, demanded his price, and could pay it, you were required by law to take his money and let him go. So, it was the proceeds from the sale of the Kala that ended up buying freedom for a lot of the enslaved people and their families. I would say that's a pretty historically significant food, a food that actually bought slavery, brought freedom for slaves. So now we've got the Kala ready to come out. And if you've ever had those beignets, you know that they're served sprinkled with powdered sugar. So that's the way we finish the Kala. The Kala are so much easier to make than a beignet. And frankly, I think that if you taste that little bit of history that goes into the pot with the Kala, they taste better than beignet too. So now to finish the Kala, we sprinkle them with some powdered sugar. Fast, easy, and a delicious taste of history, the Kala. Thank you.